morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we'll start the session now so as to not delay any of you. And then those that obviously join in at a later stage uh, will join the conversation then. Uh, before we start, may I please ask that all of you please turn off your microphones. Please mute yourselves just so that there aren't any sounds uh, in the background. Thank you. Morning, sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to find out, can you all see the screen? I've shared my screen. It's not, it's a sharing. Is it, can you see the, the presentation? Yes. Okay, I see okay. nods. All right, okay, that's good. Okay. Yes, Great. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, all right, okay, I'll, we'll start then. Let me, let me start by first introducing ourselves. My name is Sinayo Sekhenya, and I am a program manager for the Orange Knowledge Program. I work for NAFIC, uh, the regional office. So we are NAFIC South Africa slash Southern Africa, and we're based here in Pretoria, South Africa, in the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. So we are a regional office uh, representing South Africa, Tanzania, uh, Zambia, and Mozambique. And um, yeah, I've been with NAFIC for about a year now, and I'm really, really happy and excited to meet Olivia. I'll hand over to my colleague Adera. Hi, good morning. Herself. Good morning, all. Um, my name is Adera Kachenga. I'm the program officer for the Orange Knowledge Program. I would like to first of all say congratulations to all of our attendees and grantees. Um, this is this is I can imagine great news on your end that your applications were successful. Um, so we'll start with the program. I'll just hand it over to Sanaya to kind of just go through the agenda and we can get things going. Yeah, OK, just to inform you all that this session is kindly being recorded, so we will be sending all of you a copy of this uh, pre departure uh, a webinar afterwards for your for your records. And um, so, yes, as I mentioned, uh, the purpose of today's session is for you to get to know one another. All of you have been awarded, were awarded an Orange Knowledge Program uh, scholarship to undertake a short course in the Netherlands. So congratulations. And um, for that, it's a highly competitive and internationally renowned scholarship. So a big, big congratulations to all of you on having been awarded uh, the scholarship. And um, yeah, the purpose of today's webinar is for us to give you a little bit of practical information and tips and to prepare you for your studies in the Netherlands and really just for you to also know who are the other grantees and to know about us as an office, what we do and for you to know that we're here to support you. And so without further ado, I will we'll start with the program. We have a very special guest keynote speaker who has joined us this morning, um, Ambassador Magret um, Verweek. Uh, Dr. Fevek is the ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Zambia, Zimbabwe and uh, Malawi. And as you are, many of you here joining us today, I'm sure from Zambia. So it's really, really exciting. Um, yeah, it's that, and we're really privileged to have Dr. Fevek here to, to welcome and congratulate all of you um, on having been awarded an OKP scholarship. So I'll, before, without uh, delaying me further, I'll hand over to Dr. Fevek. Thank you, Dr. Fevek, for joining us today. Thank you so much and a very good morning to the NUFIC NESO South Africa team. And most of all, my greetings and welcome to all the students that are about to embark on this very exciting chapter. Um, thank you, NUFIC NESO, uh, especially Sinayo Sirenya, the country program manager, and Adira Kachienga, the program support officer for organizing this event. Now, the Netherlands is very, very proud of the Orange Knowledge Program, which has helped thousands of mid-career professionals take a huge step forward in their organizations or industries. Whether Excuse working me. in government ministries, private businesses or NGOs, NUFIC scholars have an edge that allows them to solve difficult problems 
take up leadership positions and create and innovate new products and approaches in a wide range of sectors. The scholarships have helped people to help their communities and help their countries. Now in this fast changing world with global challenges like climate change, conflict and rising poverty, we cannot continue doing things in the same old way. Dutch institutions are keenly attuned to this and you must be ready to think in a new way and outside of the box. We greatly value diversity and collaboration. So you must be flexible, self-reflective and open-minded. The importance of diversity is reflected in our student bodies. Since Dutch recognized, you will find yourself learning alongside people from many different backgrounds. Cherish this opportunity to challenge your existing views on the world and to connect with people you would never otherwise have met. Indeed, the connections between us are also a vital part of these scholarships. They promote people to people linkages that are the basis of future economic, social, and political participation and cooperation between our countries, members of the global village. Make these connections, be bold and be open-minded. When you return home after your studies, I also wish to encourage you all to join your local Dutch Alumni Association. These will give you networking opportunities and a chance to work on social projects or to encourage our prospective students to take up opportunities in the Netherlands. I'm more than a little envious that you have before you an extended period of learning and adventure. I completed my undergraduate and master's at Leiden University and I concluded a PhD at Utrecht University. Those periods of learning changed me for the better. And I hope you gain as much from your time as I did. As you head off, I say to all of you, congratulations on this achievement. Work hard, have fun, and tot ziens. Thank you, Dr. Favek. Thank you for those really, really inspirational words. Um, and yeah, congratulations once again to, to all of you. It really, really is a huge achievement to have been awarded an OKP scholarship. Thank you, Dr. Favek, for um, those congratulations to our grantees. And the next parts of our program will be Adira and I um, giving you all some information on um, life and studies in the Netherlands as an international student and just giving you some practical tips as to how to prepare yourselves and then for arrival in the Netherlands. Um, important things to note as well. I think many of you will be leaving some of you uh, next month already in November. So for us, it was really important to know who our grantees are because you will be our alumni in the future. And for us to know that we are here as an office to support you. And so yes, without further ado, we will proceed to our presentation now with some tips on um, studies in the Netherlands. It's awesome if they can see the screen. Okay. Um, afternoon all. I just wanted to find out, can you all see the presentation? Is it expanded properly? Yes. If somebody, is, is it fine? Yes. All right, perfect. Okay. So we'll start. Okay, Let's great. I just want to. We will also, as we as we mentioned, we will, this session is recorded, so we'll send you a copy of the recording as well as this PowerPoint uh, presentation. Okay, so yeah, before departure, um, some important things to note in terms of uh, documents to put together. 
before departure. So excuse just the technical bit. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. So before departure, um, you would need to, of course, have a valid passport. Um, so we hope that all of you have been, uh, if your passport is expired, that you've made the necessary arrangements to renew that. So that it's valid for the duration of your studies and for so um, coming back home. Um, a visa, a study visa as well, and the legalized birth certificate. So I think before we proceed, it's really, really important. Uh, what we wanted to emphasize to all of you is um, your first point of contact for anything you're unsure about as you prepare your paperwork and your documents is the international office of your university. So you should, I'm sure all of you have already been, uh, have received your, your award letter, your scholarship award letter from the Dutch institution where you'll be studying. If, if someone from the international office has already been in touch with you, in touch with you that's good. If not, please, uh, as soon as possible, get in touch with the international office of your university because they are very accustomed to all of this and they will be able to assist you with in all the information you require about your paperwork and your documents before before study. So please get in touch with the international office. Um, but what we from our side um, would like to convey to you is to already start the process of applying for a visa, study visa. In a, in a later slide, we'll get to the different types of study visas for the Netherlands. Your scholarship award letter, that would be important to have that for travel, confirmation of your bank accounts, and bank transfer statements of tuition fees. Again, your university will be able to provide you with, with more information on that. Um, your admission letter to the institution and tuition fee receipts, if the tuition fees have already been paid up front and full by your scholarship provider. Um, medical insurance and marriage certificates, if applicable. So these are just some of the documents that we encourage you to start putting together now. Um, some more paperwork that you would need to prepare in advance would be, besides of course the original passports you'll be traveling with, just also keep on hand copies of these, so your passport and plane ticket as well, with, um, money as well for the first two weeks. I think in your scholarship award letters you would have been informed about your stipend and how much money um, you will receive as an OKP scholar towards your living costs. An OKP scholarship is a general scholarship, but it's not completely fun, um, fully, fully fun. There might be a bit of um, costs or funds that you would need to put together towards your living costs. But please check with whoever from your university uh, um, send to you the scholarship award letter, wh whoever you've been liaising with, just to find out on, on because that's very important to know whether um, the money you've been allocated would be su sufficient for, for living costs. Uh, certified copies of your certificates, so your degree and diploma certificates as well. Um, this, of course, might also be required as part of the visa application. How evidence you have enough money to stay. Again, this is dependent on um, your scholarship. So we advise you to please um, liaise constantly with your institution in the Netherlands and your focal point there regarding um, the visa application, if there's anything you're unsure of. A housing contract as well. You would need to ensure that before your studies, you've tried to secure accommodation. Um, in the Netherlands and the city in which you will be studying. So that's really important that you make start to make those preparations. Um, on the last slide of this PowerPoint, we've put the link to the study in Netherlands page. It's a really, really useful website and a good resource for international students going to study in the Netherlands that provides you with a whole lot of information about um, accommodation in the Netherlands, how to apply for your visa applications. So we encourage you to also visit that website um, as you prepare for um, embarking on your studies. 
and then uh, yes, the address of your institution as well. So make sure that you have all important information related to your university, the name of the university, the, the official scholarship letter, your acceptance letter as well for the course that you will be studying in the Netherlands. It's important to have that on hand as well. And then onto your visa application, as we mentioned previously, you will need to apply for a study visa uh, for the Netherlands. So it's important that you please um, visit the website of um, VFS in your country. So whether it's VFS, the Visa Application Center of the Netherlands and South Africa, Tanzania, Zambia, Mozambique, Please also get in touch with the Embassy of the Netherlands in your country if you're unsure of anything related to the visa process, but also your institution. Once again, the International Office of your University will be able to assist you with what is required in putting together your, your visa application. But there are two different, broadly speaking, two different types of visas that you would need um, to either apply for, for your studies in the Netherlands. So it's either a short stay visa or Schengen visa. Uh, for visits less than 90 days or a long stay visa, um, which is called an MVV um, for stays of 90 days or more and a residence permit. These two are required for stays of more than 90 days, as well as um, authorization, authorization to travel into the Netherlands. So the scholarship award letter, uh, your return flight tickets and the Dutch Institute your Dutch higher education institution will liaise with Dutch immigration services regarding your residence permits. So once again, it's really important that you you, you remain in contact with um, your university because they will assist you in, in applying for a residence permits with the Dutch immigration services, should this be required for your stay in the Netherlands. And then some more information on the visa, similar to what we previously mentioned. Um, it would the type of visa you apply for study visas dependent on the duration of your stay and your nationality and the purpose of your stay in the Netherlands. But it would either be a Schengen or short stay visa for stays of less than 90 days. Again, dependent on your nationality. And with this visa, you would be allowed to travel to any of the 27 European Union countries as well. So which is really nice that you'd be able to, to travel, which we encourage as well, not just within the Netherlands, but if possible outside of the Netherlands as well to make the most out of your, your stay and your time in Europe. Um, and then stays of longer than 90 days, again, depending on your nationality and for what purpose you'll be there, in this case being studies, you would need um, the longer stay visa or residence permits um, for all non-EU uh, nationals. I'll now hand over to my colleague Adira who will take us through the also this still insurance. Before I hand over to Adira, I'll just briefly mention a bit on the different types of insurance um, which you would likely need to take out and prepare in advance uh, for your studies. So there's um, healthcare insurance and um, the type of healthcare insurance you need uh, depends on your personal situation. So we've put a link to a useful website here for you to get more information on insurance for stays in the Netherlands, but also the study in Netherlands uh, website is a good resource as well to obtain more information as well as your the International Office of the Institution on, on the, the different types of insurance cover that you would need while in the Netherlands. It could be that you would need liability insurance if you cause an accident or someone's injured, if you or damage someone's property for any reason, you might be responsible for pay, uh, paying the costs of these. We've just listed here some of the different types of insurance cover. Um, it's not necessary that you would need all of these, but again, when you're compiling your visa application and your university will be able to advise on this further repatriation insurance. 
might be necessary as well. Should you need to be returned to your home country, if you become ill, you might need to get medical care closer to home. And in this event, you would need to get uh, repatriation insurance. And then um, household contents insurance as well. And um, this would cover the contents of, of any damage um, to items or loss of items in your home um, as a result of theft, fire, water damage, etc. So this is just a list of some of the types of insurance that you might need while in the Netherlands, but um, your institution will, as well as will be able to advise you further on, on this as well, but just important to keep this in mind. All right, um, thanks, Sinayo. Um, I'm just asking for a minute. There are a few people that are waiting in the lobby, so I just want to um, accept them. So just give us a second, if you don't mind. All right, um, so we'll just now go to the next slide. Don't mind. So um, this is just a few points that you need to consider when you arrive at um, the Amsterdam Schiphol International Airport. Um, so when you obviously arrive, you need to go to passport control. When you're at passport control, I beg your pardon, you show them your passport, your visa, your administ administ admin admission letter, um, return ticket, and evidence of financial support and scholarship award letter. So um, before you travel, I would advise that you actually make copies of all this documentation um, so that when you are asked for these documentations, they are readily available. Um, obviously, you need to... Um, pick up your luggage. Um, and also another point is, if you are picked up from the airport, that is also dependent on the arrangement that is made with the relevant Dutch institution, right? But if that's not the case, if an arrangement is not made for you to be picked up at the airport, you need to head um, to the airport train station and buy a ticket for your destination. Um, another important factor is that you can also go through the train schedules, which can be checked on um, on the uh, stated website. So I think an important thing, and we reiterate this again, that if you have any questions or any queries, please contact the university contact person or the relevant dust institution so that when you embark on your journey, you know, you have everything um, in place. And important things to do upon your arrival. So when you arrive um, at um, at in, in the Netherlands, and also dependent on which institution you're going, um, the first thing that would be required from you is to register at the Dutch host institution, the international office. Um, from there, they will assist you with the following things. They will assist you with registering within the municipality, um, registering with um, IND, which is Immigration and Naturalization Services. And by you registering, you'd also then pick up your resident permit from um, the IND. Um, I know that COVID is, um, we've slowly moved away from COVID. Um, but, you know, there are COVID protocol checks point at the um, at the airport. But I think um, just take that into consideration when you're traveling. If you have if you've been vaccinated, um, it doesn't do you any harm of, of carrying your vaccination card. Um, opening a, a Dutch bank account. I think that's something you take into consideration depending on how long um, you are staying um, and that you can also liaise with the contact person at the relevant Dutch institution that you're going and they can just kind of guide you and assist you in, in terms of that process. And then also another thing is don't forget to inform or register with your own embassy before departure. Um, this is a very important thing, you know, in case anything were to happen, 
um, when you're in the Netherlands, it's good that your embassy knows that you are planning to travel there. And also when you arrive there, um, it's also it, it wouldn't do you harm to just visit your the relevant embassy and just inform them that you are in the country. And then another thing um, uh, to look at is way to buy food and transportation. I mean, in the Netherlands, there are various shops, um, you know, more specifically, you know, we have supermarkets, the Asian shops, there are open street markets that are opened one or two times a week. Um, also, some supermarkets have halal section, have a halal section. Um, and then also there's a canteen at your host um, institution. Um, and just another thing to take into consideration that, you know, um, relatively the, the restaurants are quite pricey. So we would advise you maybe, you know, to buy your food or your lunch at a shop um, or, you know, get your lunch at a, canteen, at, at a canteen at your host institution. Transportation, um, one thing to take into account, the, the transportation system in Netherlands is quite effective. Um, it does run on schedule, so I would advise you to please always be on time. Um, and this is just um, something that you can take note of, just even you know, when you're attending meetings or when you're attending classes, um, um, the Dutch or the Netherlands are very um, particular about time. So please take that into consideration. And then there's also an OV chip card. So it's a card that you can use on public transportation, such as the tram, the train and the bus. And then also cycling. I mean, Netherlands is known as a cycling nation. So if you want to embark on that um, uh, exercise of cycling across, uh, you know, to, to go to various places, that is an option for you as well. One thing you just need to make sure is that you need to lock your your, your bicycle at the designated um, uh, parking parking allocation for, for, for bikes. Another thing is walking. Um, Netherlands is, is is, is quite a nice area to walk. The, the roads are well paved. So part of you also enjoying the experience of being in Netherlands is just walking around and seeing what's out there. So would also encourage you that if you have time on your hands, just take a walk because it's relatively quite safe um, day and night. But it's always good that you're walking with, if you're walking by yourself or walking with an individual, um, it's, it's a nice activity that you can taken. And then um, part-time jobs. Um, so this is dependent on a lot of factors, you know, if that's something you want to do. You know, if you're from the EU and EA or Switzerland, you're free to work without restrictions. But I mean, um, most of our grantees obviously are from the SADC region. So other countries, um, some restrictions we put would be put in place for you to, to work. Um, you definitely need a work permit. Um, you can work for a maximum of 16 hours a week, or instead you can work full time during the summer months of June, July and August. Um, and your employer would need to then, um, you know, apply for the work permit. But that's really dependent on your schedule and if this is something you want to embark on. But if it's something you want to do, like I said, please, um, speak to your contact person at the university and just, you know, ask them, um, you know, and just state that this is something that I'm looking into. If I would like to work, what are, what are the processes that need to be followed? And then also there's a toolkit that is, um, we've put a link there and this you can share with your employee. This will just guide them through um, the official pro procedures because like I mentioned earlier, your employee will be part and part of the process of you applying for your, your work permit. And then also um, for more useful information, you can always go to the Study in Holland um, website um, and just kind of peruse that and see what, um, what relevant points or relevant information you can get with regards to working in the Netherlands. So um, just a few tips of when, when you're traveling to the Netherlands and when you're there, I know a lot of you be away from home and you know you'll be missing um, 
your friends and your family. So I would always advise is that you get together with other students, um, you know, from your respective countries or from other countries, you know, have an opportunity to, you know, to cook with them or have an international dinner. And also, you know, make time to go out and, you know, have some fun, whether it's going to the cinema or a concert. I know with most of your accommodation, you might be living with other international students. So it's also a great opportunity for you to know the country, but also get to know other people from um, from various countries. You might even find out that you're doing the same courses as them. And, you know, it's always good to have somebody within the same course that can be a friend or a study buddy. Um, so the, the second point is make a schedule for household chores. Um, most of you might um, get into an arrangement of sharing accommodation. And, you know, we have to take into consideration that people come from different backgrounds and different cultures. So, you know, please take into account that when you're sharing a space, um, you need to just make sure that it's maintained and it's decent and it's clean and just have consideration that you are staying with others. So please, please respect each other's cultures and, and customs. And then also try to get engaged in activities with other students at your institution or in the city, like I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, when you go to the international office, you know, sometimes they have various um, international student societies, whether it's the Zambia Student Association or the Tanzania Student Association or the South African Student Association, you know, just find out and see if that's something you'd want to be, you want to partake in. And also one thing to realize that if, you know, part of your stay is getting to know other people, you realize that if you need something like assistance with accommodation or just assistance with navigating, you know, this new, this new part of your life, these people will be there and can assist you because they're going through that experience. So I, I would really encourage for you to, you know, not kind of stay on your own, but, you know, make the effort to embark and and, and meet people um, from various various countries. And then also mental, mental well-being. Um, it's an important thing to, to, to mention, you know, you are in a foreign country and sometimes that can have an effect on your, on your mental well-being and your mental health. Um, you know, change of weather, change of, of season, being away from family, but there are services that are there to assist and, and support you. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Um, we, you know, we want to ensure that you stay there as well. And part of us ensuring that you stay in the Netherlands as well is that, you know, mentally you're well taken care of. So, you know, there are various, um, yeah, uh, persons or persons or organizations that your international, um, the international office or the contact person um, at your at your university slash dash institution can refer you to. And then one thing is a fine thing to do is also share your experience on social your social media pages. You know, part of um, this experience is that people get to see what what your experience is studying in the Netherlands and future applicants can, you know, can see that and see that, OK, this is this is this is part of the OKP scholarship experience. So please, um, you know, if that's something you're interested, be more than welcome to share your experiences on the study, not that in the in about your study in the in the Netherlands, but also be, be more than welcome to tag us on 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 your social media pages so we can also see um how you're doing and then um just one more slide um so we have a bit of a q and a um, session and you're more than welcome to write in the chat if you have any questions um, pertaining to our presentation um, I just wanted to confirm with my colleague Sinayo, we also have another, um, a previous alumni who has, um, who was awarded an OKP scholarship and she will also be doing a presentation. I just want to make sure that she's online. So just give us a moment. I am here, Adira. Yes, so Skolista is there. So maybe... Um, before we go to a Q and A, maybe Skolista can just kind of share her experience in the Netherlands. Um, she is one of our alumni, and it would be great just to hear what her experience was in the Netherlands. So, 
please um, take it away, Skolista. Right. Um, thank you very much um, for the invitation um, to Sinayo and and Adira. Um, so I'll I'll just tell you guys about my experiences. I'm not sure if you can see my presentation. Can yeah. We, can we all see your presentation? We can see it. Can the other attendees see the presentation? No, we can't see. It's we can't, can't see. see. Yeah, it's. Yeah. You can see. At, at least it's much better now. Yeah. Is it much better? Much better, yes. Okay. All right. Um, so as Adira mentioned, my name is Scholastica Amsifezewe. I actually work at, um, I'm a lecturer at the University of South Africa. I went to the Netherlands in 2014 uh, under the Sabosa Skill Program. And I was there for three months. I was at the Institute of, Institute of Social Studies, um, which is which is part of the Erasmus University in Rotterdam. And just before I start with my presentation, I just want to um, acknowledge what uh, Madam Ambassador said about how she's envious of, of what you guys have ahead of you. And, and I won't lie, I, I actually echo her sentiments. You know, you are going to have such a great experience there. You can take it from me. You know, first thing first, I would like to tell you guys that it's probably winter right now. So make sure that you pack some warm clothes and um, it rains a lot. Um, so you also just want some waterproof, you know, those uh, waterproof boots if possible. Now, let me just go on. So here's um, the Institute of Social Studies where I was at. Um, it was, like I said, I was there for a period of three months. And if I'm honest with you guys, the three months flew by very quickly, you know, but I learned so much. Uh, you know, I was so privileged by just having that opportunity, you know, um, getting out of South Africa, being in a different place, looking at at the world through different lens. This is just right outside the institution. Um, I think Adira mentioned that there's a lot of canals in, in the Netherlands, so you need to, to expect that. You need to be cautious of that. Um, but it's well lit even at night, you know, but it's something I found very, very beautiful. What to expect? Um, she mentioned that it's completely different cultures, but in, in her saying that, just remember that it's also quite diverse, you know, so you will meet people from all around the world from different continents, you know, and I think that's what makes it also exciting to be there. Um, it's highly developed. Um, one thing I picked up was the largest variety of bread and cheese, which I had, I had ever seen in my life, you know. Um, when I was there, this was in 2014, the internet was absolutely fantastic. Um, the, the safety aspect also, I cannot say enough about that. As someone who grew up in Cape Town, I just found it very refreshing that I wasn't afraid that my phone would be snatched out of my hand. You know, it's very peaceful, so it's very quiet. Um, Adira also mentioned this. Adira, it's like you you went through my presentation. Um, she mentioned the transport. <laughs> the transport is always on time. Everything is on time. Everything is highly functional, you know. So when you are there, just look at things which you can take away and, and come and implement back here in, in, in on the continent. You know, so the efficient transport system means that you won't get there and they're telling you uh, train 157 from this place to there and has been cancelled. No, no, no. You know, everything is, is very um, functional. The country is also very clean, um, meaning there's, there's been said everywhere, you won't see trash. I mean, I didn't even see a piece of paper or a bottle in the canal. So that was, that says a lot, you know. Um, I must mention this because I was there in winter. There was a great selection of tea at the supermarket. You know, here we are used to our standard rooibos and, and you know, the, the other five roses. No, no, no. They, there was all kinds of infusions and I had, had a good time having these. I brought back some for my family members. Okay, she also mentioned the issue of bicycles. Please learn to ride a bicycle um, because you you get on your bicycle and go everywhere. You know, it's it's a very efficient mode of transport. Um, it's also very cost effective, I would say. So if you if you, you right now just 
go home and, and, and learn to ride a bicycle so that you can cycle around the city. Also, if there's a South African Z, there's no load shedding in the Netherlands. So please, please, guys, come back with sustainable solutions for us. You know? Okay, what do you need to bring? Um, They've addressed all the technical stuff. So that's, for me on my side, I don't have to talk about that. But I just have to say, you have to bring an open mind. You know, you have to also come with a sense of adventure. You have to be expectant. You know, not just in terms of the culture and, and being um, on a whole different continent, but also in terms of what you are going to learn. Right. You also have to bring a great attitude because like Adira mentioned, you're meeting so many cultures there. So many. Um, I mean, you might be invited to like a culture night where you need to go and try out foods from different parts of of the world. You know, so that kind of attitude of, oh, I'll try this out. Oh, oh I won't eat that. Then it's OK. But, you know, just just be um, be a good spot. OK, um, I had to take a picture of this as well. Um, this is um, the strip waffles. Um, it's something very, it's a, it's a nice little dessert. It's like a biscuit, but a waffle as well, you know. So please try them when you are there and, and bring some for your friends and your family. Okay. Um, here's something very important. You need to take your time to acclimatize to your environment, but not to your studies. In terms of your studies, it's go, 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 go. You know, when, maybe I'm speaking as a lecturer, but the minute you get there, Make sure that you know when your courses, your class times are, what courses you're doing, where the venues are, you know. It's okay that you take time to get with the culture, the weather, and the works. But in terms of your studies, don't, that is your number one priority, if anything. It's not the socializing. It's not the meeting people. Great if you're meeting people, but never lose sight of your studies, okay? Because this is um, tax money, which is now being, being given for, uh, to assist you with your studies. So don't lose sight of that. And then, okay, I just spoke about that. I said, find your circle, but also meet new people, you know? So it's always good to have a friend who you can cry, who can help you out, you know? If you're feeling homesick, but also uh, do meet new people, try out new things. But if they are, if they go against your core beliefs and your values, then do not partake, you know? And I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Um, you will miss home and that is okay. So keep in touch with your loved ones. Make sure you call them, video call them, you know? All right. Um, I just have some images for you guys here. Um, this is what... These images are of where I stayed. I stayed where I could look at the, the palace, which I thought was also very exciting. And in order for me to get to town, I would literally walk, walk right next to the palace. So uh, I think on this day I did sneak a picture. I was not sure if it's illegal or not, but this is this is a view on, on my left side. On your left, that's the view of the, the canal and that's the palace where the king stays. OK, this is um, making friends, networking and socializing. The picture where it's uh, on, on my left or, or your left, it was uh, the night I arrived. So they had a social event for us, like a welcome party. Then the other event, we went to Cologne for a festival um, for the carnival in Germany. So this was a field trip which the institution organized. You know, I think we had to contribute to transport, but otherwise it was just great, great adventure, you know, and 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 these are the kinds of things you might want to look out for, you know, you because you might have a school field trip maybe to Luxembourg or to Switzerland, or I remember also, I couldn't find those pictures, but we went to the Justice Palace and the, the international um, court. We, we also took a field trip with with one of our professors. So that learning, those field trips, is also a good way to just immerse more yourself in your studies. And you know, so um, the social events on campus. I'm gonna show you. We had the color run, which are the 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 Hindu students organized. But this is the traditional color run. You know, the, I think it's a welcoming of sp spring. Then um, there was a Valentine's Day event as well, which um, a social group on campus organized, and it was so much fun, you know. Then this is just a picture I took walking around because I, I walked everywhere. I can't ride a bicycle. I'm so ashamed to admit it to you guys right now, but that's one thing I'm going to learn before the year ends. <laughs> you know, so getting around, I walked, and this is just a picture I came across. I took a picture of it because I liked, I liked it. Um, Adira mentioned how you're going to get around, so I won't 
get on that. Then in terms of your expenditure, although um, I think Sinayo said you have a generous stipend, but you still need to be frugal, right? So here on the on, on my one hand is the market. The market is absolutely robust. If you can buy in bulk with your friends, produce and then split it amongst the three of you that that's a great way to save money but you can also go to the supermarket for convenience you know think of it if the south africans in the group think of it as wool woolworths you know everything is is cleaned for you chopped for you chopped onions so if you like convenience and you, your budget allows then then by all means you know that's where you also find that um variety of millions of loaves of breads <laughs> OK, and then uh, right there in The Hague, there was a club called Havana. So we, we used to go there, you know, um, can I give you guys a tip for those of you who drink? When you tip the bartender, she makes your cocktails extra, extra strong. For those of you who don't drink, don't go there. <laughs> you know, go there for the music, you know, it's a great, great dance music. So absolute, absolute fun. And then um, walking around again, things to do on the weekend. I said you can just walk around and take in your neighborhood. You go east on this day, you go west on the other day. I have a picture here where I stumbled upon little John or Yankee. Um, he's actually pointing at the, the parliament building across the, the road from, from where I was. But these are little treasures which you find in your neighborhood, you know, as you walk around, you know, as you just, I, I love exploring where I live. And, and the safety aspect also made me just take advantage of that. Okay. Okay, now here's where I said remain true to yourself. So um, you've heard of coffee shops in the Netherlands. This is where they sell marijuana because it's 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 legal there, you know. And if you are if you are like I want to try this out or not, stay true to your values and your principles. I would not say if I tried it or not. You just make your own assumptions. <laughs> okay. Now, what do I need you guys to take away from my presentation? Please go and live your best student life in the Netherlands. Immerse yourself in the culture, observe, ask and be, you know. You already have a lot going on for you. The fact that you are awarded these scholarships, it means that you already have something going on for you. You just have to build up on that, you know. And please, please, please do not lose sight of why, why you're there. And now I just want to show off. Here's my certificate of completion. I got an average of 89 for, 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 for the courses I did and I, I I'm just so grateful for the experience. Good luck and have fun. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kalista, for your presentation. I think it's just added a nice touch to, you know, sharing your experience with our fellow grantees. So, you know, please take note of, of what she said. And like I said, this is, um, you know, just ending off is that, you know, you have a lot going for you. Um, the fact that you have been selected, you know, out of so many applications already speaks volumes. So immerse yourself in the experience. Um, enjoy the Netherlands, but at the same time, you know, work hard and just have that in the back of your mind. You're there for a specific, specific reason. Yes, so if you have, we're now going to go to the q and A. I I just want to share my screen. Seconds. And sorry, before we get to the Q&A, um, if you have any questions about studying in the Netherlands, please go to um, www.studyinthenetherlands.org, but you're also more than welcome to visit us on, um, oh, sorry, drop us an email at info at nesosouthafrica.org. So please, um, yeah, these are social media handles, so don't don't be shy to to reach out to us. Let's share it. Oh, yeah. Are there any questions? We'll now open the floor to some questions that any of you might have about um, any aspect of today's program. There might be questions in the chat. As, okay, this is a question I've seen bef in the before departure side, the submission of marriage certificate, if applicable. I'd like to know if it's allowed to bring a company, family, or married students. I on that I'm not 100% sure. To be honest, it would depend on this 
you will be informed when you apply for your visa application. So once you start the process of applying for your student visa, please ask them as well whether it is allowed to bring your, your spouse or dependents along with you. It might not be a problem. They might say if it's, you know, at your own expense, at your own cost, but they would still obviously, they would need to apply also for the necessary visa. But um, to ensure that you get the accurate um, answer to this, please ask your institution as well, the Dutch education institution, if this is allowed. And if it is, then then once you start your visa application, they will guide you through the process of, of making those arrangements. I don't see any other questions if there's in the chat, but if someone has a question, you're welcome to also turn off your turn on your microphone and your video and and ask your question. Raise your hand and then we'll we'll allow you to to ask a question. Okay. Cool of period. Um, so there's a question for from Teko Fatso. Is there a cool of period after the scholarship? Um, can you just clarify what do you mean in terms of cool of period? Just for us to have a better understanding on how to how to respond. While Teko is clarifying that for us, we'll then um sorry, there's somebody mics, there's somebody's mic that is on. Can you please turn it off if you don't mind? Um, how long does the visa application process take? Um, I think that will obviously be dependent when you start applying for your visa. I would imagine the sooner you start, the better. Um, and like we mentioned in, in the presentation, start communicating. Yes, start, start the process now. That would be our advice. And then also reach out to your contact person at the university you know, they are also better placed to give you proper direction in terms of the whole procedure of, of, of your, your visa application office. Sina and I are not kind of privy to the to the finer details, but since since you know you've been out now that you know that you've been awarded the scholarship, you just rather start the process immediately. So you don't want to get into a situation where you started it late and then there are hiccups that arise. So the sooner you start, the better. But I think the first thing you need to do is contact um, your the your contact person at the Dutch alum uh, at the Dutch um, institution that you're going to. I think this is clarity on her question. Maybe if she can apply for another opportunity in the Netherlands to help her. So. Um, studies, I think. Sorry to disturb you, Adela. Can I can I come in? I just want to 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 uh, also to add what to what you have just in, uh, said in regards to visa application. Is this Seko Fatso or this is, is it Godensha? Yes. Yes. yes um, so so the visa processing time is fifteen working days. Thank you, Godensha, for And because that. also people are traveling a lot because you know because of COVID, people now they are they are traveling a lot, and uh, the appointments are done on um, online. Um, so, like what you said, it's 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 good to start now because you might not be able to get a an appointment an, an appointment um, uh, because sometimes we are we are overloaded, especially at our office. We um, our schedule is it's, it's 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 quite quite busy. So start now. It's fifteen working days to process. Thank you. Thank you, Kodensha. Like our, our colleague reiterated, please start immediately as soon as possible. You really don't want to waste um, such an opportunity because you haven't started the process yet. So immediately get get onto that. OK, um, there's some questions in the chat. Uh, OK, somebody asked. Oh, OK, let me let's go back. Maybe to Tsekho Fatso. She, she, she asked, can she apply for another opportunity in the Netherlands? This also, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure because it would depend on the purpose of, you know, an Orange Knowledge Program scholarship is also to come back to go back home, you know, to go back to your institution. I think most of you are working. You would have needed to submit 
an employer statement and a get endorsement for your application to apply for the scholarship when you were applying for the scholarship. And um, so really also we encourage and the purpose of the scholarship also to go home, go back to your institution, and implement what you learned and, and acquired during your stay in the Netherlands. So you would need to check that with your scholarship provider because with some scholarships, there also actually is that condition in the grant that you need to return um, after your studies. Um, so once again, just also check that and make sure you understand fully what you're getting yourself into, you know, um, by taking up this opportunity, understand your grant award and the conditions attached to it, if there are any, and if there's anything you're unsure of, please ask um, the Dutch education institution where you will be studying. They will be able to advise on this as well. So we just have a question from, and this is directed to Solista. Um, one of the grantees has asked, um, did you ever have any experience with racism? Um, hi, Tinta. I think you must be Zambian. <laughs> uh, not <laughs> I, I did not experience any any racism in the Netherlands. Funny thing is, as a South African, I've actually experienced more racism in my country than I experienced that side, you know. Um, and the only thing is, OK, I'm, I'm a very outgoing extrovert person. All right. I talk to people. I make conversation with strangers. It's just the nature of my personality. But you find that with the people in the Netherlands, in particular uh, 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 Dutch people, they're just very reserved. It doesn't mean they won't respond to you. You know, it doesn't mean you won't make friends. I have a friend of mine uh, actually there in Amsterdam. We was very quiet, but then eventually he said, can we exchange numbers and speak, you know? And, and, and so the racism, absolutely not, not even from other international students, not at all. Um, the other thing is historically, if you look at the Netherlands, it used to be a port, you know, Vasco da Gama trades and all that. It was like a, one of a, a, a massive trade ports. So that actually makes them more open to outsiders. You know, they won't jump up and down with enthusiasm. No, no, no. But they are very, very, very open to outsiders. And if you've been to Cape Town before, in terms of the racial diversity, mixed race people, there's a lot of mixed race people in the Netherlands. At one point, I thought I was in Cape Town because I just saw a lot of people who looked what we call coloreds in Cape Town, you know, <laughs> so that would also tell you about how open they are to outsiders. So don't worry about that. Okay, um, so we just also with a bit of our time schedule, we're just going to try. We might not be able to answer all the questions, but I'm going to now look. There's a question um, with regard to my application was made for online short courses, but the explanation focus on students need to travel to the Netherlands. Can you differentiate this, please? Um, sure I'm, I'm, I, we're not quite sure that we understand your question, but maybe just drop us an email. And then um, just if you can just rephrase that and we'll be more than welcome um, to kind of just figure out how to best response to that. But yes, at Simone, if I'm pronouncing it right, just drop us an email because we're having a bit of difficulty um, understanding what, what you mean by a question. And then there's a question from Diana from for plant and plant related products. What is allowed and not allowed in the Netherlands? I mean, that is something you'd obviously have to go to on maybe a government website. And, you know, countries are very particular when you're carrying agricultural goods from another country. Um, so you have to be very cautious and very careful in bringing such items to the Netherlands. You don't want to get there and then you're paying a fine for such goods, but they're quite strict with those rules. So if it's not necessary, I, I would advise you not to carry such products um, because you don't want to be detained at, at the airport because you are you know, you, you're carrying goods that are not allowed in the limits. But I know even internationally, a lot of countries are very strict with 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 such with such agricultural products. At what point does one start the visas process when I receive the papers or once my participation has been confirmed? Um, yeah. which, um like we said earlier, Patricia, you should start your visa process application process now. Our colleague also Godensha said that, you know, it takes 15 working days, but the sooner you start, the better. You should have already, I would imagine, received your um, confirmation letter saying that you have been awarded. 
So you need to, I would, for all our attendees and all our recipients, start your visa application process immediately. We're reiterating that again. Please start that process immediately so you do not miss an opportunity to um, come to the Netherlands and complete your, your short course. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that's it from our end. If there are any questions, um, you're more than welcome to drop us an email. Um, from our end, we'd like to thank you for participating in, in this information session. It's also good to see the number of recipients that have um, that have been awarded the scholarship. So a huge congratulations to you. You've all done something right for you to be selected. And thank you once again for, for, for partaking in this session. I'll just hand it over to Sinai to close. Yes, thanks, Adira. Yeah, I want to thank you to all of you as well for taking the time today to attend this session and re congratulations on being awarded the scholarship. We really hope that it will be the time of your lives, essentially, in the Netherlands and that you'll really make the most out of your stay there, as um, Sifezira Scholastica mentioned as well. And we're here, as Adira mentioned, should you... Um, want to ask more questions and if there's anything you're unclear of please send us an email we'll also um send the post the video recording of this presentation on our social media pages and also send your the the powerpoint presentation as for reference but thank you to all of you for for joining us and please stay in touch with us as well while you're in the netherlands share your experience with us send us pictures videos and um, because once you come back you are our alumni and we want to um, maintain and retain that relationship with you. So thank you very much for attending today. Thank you so much. Have a lovely thank day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you. We'll now close the session. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.